The Destiny Breast O3 clinical trial was a study evaluating trastuzumab deruxtecan versus TDM1. We presented the updated results for this study at San Antonio. The first line standard of care for patients with HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer is trastuzumab taxane plus pertuzumab based on the Cleopatra trial. And up until recently, the standard second line therapy for patients after trastuzumab and a taxane was the uh, treatment trastuzumab m or TDM1 based on the Emilia clinical trial. Uh, the Destiny Breast O3 clinical trial, however, challenged that approach. It went head to head against TDM1 with TDXD and patients who had previously received trastuzumab and ataxane for advanced disease. The first reporting of these data was in September of 2021 and demonstrated a significantly improved median progression free survival with a hazard ratio of 0.28 at that time in favor of TDXD, making TDXD the preferred second line therapy and making TDM1 an alternative treatment regimen. At San Antonio, we presented the updated results, including overall survival, which was a key secondary endpoint. Um, it's notable in this clinical trial that about 40% of patients were being treated in the second line setting the remainder of patients were being treated in the later line setting. In other words, they had had um, more than one prior line of therapy in the metastatic setting. And about 60% of the patients had received prior uh, pertuzumab. At our reporting, the key secondary endpoint of overall survival was demonstrated to be statistically significantly longer or higher with TDXD compared to TDM1 with a hazard ratio of 0.64 and a p-value of 0.0037, which crossed the pre-specified threshold for significance. Although neither arm had uh, reached its median overall survival, the uh, percentage of patients at two years who were still alive in the TDXD arm was 77.4% versus 69.9% of patients in the TDM1 arm. Subgroup analysis demonstrated that TDXD benefited patients regardless of hormone receptor status, prior use of pertuzumab, presence of visceral metastases, number of lines of prior therapy, or baseline uh, brain metastases. Um, Progression-free survival was also updated at this analysis, and the median PFS with TDXD was 28.8 months, which was about four um, times longer than seen with TDXD, where the median PFS was 6.8 months. The objective response rate with TDXD was 78.5%, with 21% of patients having a complete response. In contrast with TDM1, the objective response rate was 35%, with 9.5% of patients experiencing a complete response. Um, in terms of safety, um, the rates of grade 3, 4 AEs with TDXD and TDM1 for, were fairly similar. Um, with TDXD, there were more um, patients who experienced all grades, nausea and vomiting, as well as alopecia. In terms of grade 3, 4 AEs, anemia and neutropenia were more commonly seen with TDXD whereas thrombocytopenia and alteration in liver enzymes were more common with TDM1. In terms of interstitial lung disease, 15.2% of patients treated with TDXD had any grade of ILD, but there were no grade four or five events. Um, although this total grade, uh, total rate of ILD of 15.2% was higher than we, we reported at the first reporting in 2021 of this study, where it was 10.5%, all of the additional events reported with longer follow-up were grade one or two. So in summary, this study demonstrates that TDXD is associated with a statistically significant improvement in overall survival with a reduced risk of death of 36%, as well as a significantly prolonged progression-free survival and objective response rate. 
Um, and with the longer treatment duration, the safety of TDXD appears similar to previous reports with no grade four or five ILD events. These data overall place TDXD firmly in the second line position now after trastuzumab and taxane for metastatic breast cancer that's HER2 positive. Thank <laughs> you.